This video tutorial is brought to you by TipSquirrel.com. For all the best Photoshop and Lightroom tips, follow at TipSquirrel on Twitter or go to Facebook.com slash TipSquirrel. Hi everybody, Mike Hoffman here, and in this video we're continuing with part 3 of my series of lessons on using the pen tool in Photoshop. In the first video we covered path fundamentals, and in the second video we used the pen tool to create some straight line paths, which we then used as a selection. If you're just joining us at this point, you may want to go back and review the previous two videos in this series to make sure that you have the foundation down. In today's video, we're going to extend what we learned last time by adding additional paths to create a more complex selection, and we're going to add additional points to our paths to make a more complex path shape. Let's start with this image. Here I have a bunch of picture frames in a single image that comes to us from image vendor Shutterstock. I want to use this frame here in the middle to create a border around an image that I've selected. In order to separate this frame from the rest of the frames, we'll actually need two paths, one to cut the frame out from the background, and a second to cut out the inner white area of the frame so that the image can show through. Creating the first path for the outside is easy enough, and this is the same process that we used in the previous video. I'll select the pen tool here at the left, and I'll make sure that we're set to be drawing a path, and we'll make sure that the shape operations are set to combine shapes. Then I'll zoom in here to get a better view, and I'll place the first point right here on the corner. Now I'll press the spacebar to temporarily change to the hand tool, and I'll drag this image over to get to the other corner, and I'll place the second point here on this corner. Now I'll pan to the next point, but I'm going to use a different method, a shortcut. I'm going to press and hold the H key for the hand tool, but while I'm holding the H key down, I'm going to click with the mouse, and this will zoom out, and I'll place the zoom window here, and when I let go of the mouse button, we're zoomed right into this space. This is the spring-loaded technique, and these shortcuts are great, so there's a bonus tip for you. I'll go ahead and place the next anchor point right here, then once again I'll press and hold the H key and click the mouse button, and go here and place my third anchor point. And now I'll repeat the process once again, and come up here and close this path. And notice the cursor change, indicating that I'm going to close the path, and I click, and now I've got my path here. I'll zoom back out, and at this point, we have a path that we can use to select the exterior of the frame, but we still need another path to cut out the center. I'll go ahead and switch back to the pen tool, and we'll draw another path here in the interior. I'll go ahead and lay down the first point. But before we go any further on this, let's change the path operations here to subtract front shape. This will result in a selection that doesn't include this path. I'll go ahead and place the remaining points here around the border of the frame using the techniques that we've already seen and learned, and then I'll place the final point here to close that path. Here in the path thumbnail, we can see that the center of the path is gray rather than white, meaning that it won't be selected. I'm going to double click on the name work path to save the path, and I'll call it frame. Now I'm going to control click on Windows or command click on a Mac right here on the thumbnail. That loads this path as a selection, and I'll go ahead and zoom out to full screen so that you can see. And now we can look at the layers panel. I'll make sure that the frames layer is selected, and I'm going to press Control J on Windows or Command J on a Mac to copy the area of the selection to a new layer. Now I'll turn the original frames layer off and we can see that sure enough here's our frame ready to use. I'll press Control T or Command T on a Mac and now I can free transform, move, drag, and resize this frame into place around my image and once I've got it into position I can commit the transform. So that's how we add paths and cut a hole from a selection using the path operations. Now let's look at adding points to an existing path. 
I have here an image of a star and I want to cut this star out from the background. Now I've already created a path by placing anchor points around all the corners of the star. But if we zoom in and select this path, we can see that the paths don't line up. We have a slight curvature problem here. Even though we have the points in the corners, we need a curved line rather than a straight line. And in order to get that curve, we're going to need to add an additional anchor point to guide this path along the curved edge. What we can do is, with this path active in the path panel, we'll select the pen tool. And now I'm going to hold the control key on Windows or the command key on a Mac and get my white arrow and click once to select this path. With the path active, hovering the pen tool over the path changes the cursor so that the pen nib has a plus sign in the lower right corner. That's the signal that if we click, we're going to add an anchor point to this path. I'll go ahead and click. And when we do, several things are happening. Now I'm going to turn this blank white layer on for a moment, just so we can see what's happening here. Here's the point that I added, but there are also two more points on either side of it. To see what happened, I'm going to hold the control key down. And with the white arrow tool, I'm going to click on this point that we've added and drag to move it. By adding an anchor point as we did in the middle of a path, Photoshop created a curved point. The other two points here are the ends of the control handles. Don't touch these points yet. We'll get to those in the next video. But notice now, as I move the anchor point around, the control handles stay oriented in the same position and the line curves so that the curve just touches at this anchor point. As it turns out, this is just what we need for our image. I'm going to turn off the white layer again, and now we can drag this anchor point in so that it matches the contour of this shape a little bit better. Now we'll repeat the process. I'll just hover over here until I see the plus sign, click to get an anchor point, and then switch to the control key to get the white arrow and drag that into position. By doing this, we're introducing more points and adding more complexity to our paths. I'll go ahead and continue around the perimeter of the star, adding the points to the segments where they're needed, and then using the control key to switch to the white arrow and drag the edges into position. I'll add one more here and one more here. And I think that's going to do it for us. So now I'll zoom back out and we've got our path created. Once we've got everything modified, we can control click or command click on a Mac to load this path as a selection. Here in the layers panel, we'll make sure the background is selected and then press control or command J. I'll turn off the background and here's our extracted star with razor sharp edges. Now I'm going to turn this white layer back on and I'll reactivate this path and switch to my pen tool and control click on it to activate it. Here we see the full path with all of the points, including the ones that we've added. Now it may happen that you need to remove an anchor point. Perhaps you've added too many or you have one particular anchor point that's giving you problems and you want it out of your path. It's easy enough. Again, with the pen tool active and with this path actively selected, we hover over any existing anchor point and the pen tool cursor changes, this time to have a minus sign next to it. When we see the minus sign, we click and that anchor point is deleted from the middle of the path and the two surrounding anchor points are reconnected with a single line. So adding and deleting anchor points is pretty straightforward and now you have another tool in your toolbox. In the next video in this series, we're going to begin to tackle drawing curved path segments from scratch. I hope you'll join me for that. My name is Mike Hoffman. My website is hoffmanartdesign.com. You'll find a variety of Photoshop, Lightroom, and photography tips, tricks, and information there. You can follow me on Twitter at mhoffman2001, and you can find me on Google Plus by simply going to gplusmikehoffman.com. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.